Hey. Oh, what up, what up? What's going on? Nothing, just, you know, finally the first non rainy day in the Bay since I've gotten back here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's been like a monsoon out here. Huh. By California standards, I guess I should clarify. So we are waiting for VJ, I believe, and a few others. Cool. All right, we Good morning. Good morning. I'll put in the chat the, the link to the meeting document. We are waiting for a couple that were lined up to present today. I'm waiting to hear from them. I've been out of town. Is this the first meeting of the year or has there been one already? No, we were going to have one um, two weeks ago, but just about everybody was still on vacation. It was like the third of January, I think. Like people, most people were still away for Christmas. Um, and so it was quiet enough that we just postponed. Um, and VJ from eBay, I had thought I'm messaging him now on all channels. Um, VJ was going to come present about why eBay pivoted to open telemetry. Um, he had a pretty cool blog post and Alolita had lined him up to be, um, Alina is online and me and her too. Sorry, folks. It's all good. How was everybody's holiday? Pretty good. I got to do a little traveling. And where were my hope? Yeah. <laughs> Thailand. Oh, man. I've been in the New England area and uh, it was a warm. Christmas, but it's still, it's still cold here. <laughs> what about you two? Um, Jersey City, nice. I didn't get to go anywhere. Just stayed in warm, warm Portugal. Yeah. Okay. Is that Jersey City in Hoboken? Oh, Hoboken. Okay, Jersey City. 
Yeah, the restaurants are great. I think, uh, sorry, it's noisy where I am, but since we're not started yet, uh, my, my theory is that New York restaurants have been suppressed in creativity by rent prices, uh, and it's held out. It's, it's a city and a city. Nice. Uh, believe it or not, I am messaging you, VJ, on LinkedIn. <laughs> Just, um, I mean, we'll move on, I suppose, if he's not going to, to be here today. Yeah, VJ said no. Are you asking about VJ? Yeah. Um, yeah. He was lined up. Uh, he said he's on vacation this week. Oh, Hello. Alita had uh, but yeah, had set up today for him, but um, I guess maybe that's not going to happen today. So we should move on. I know Ryan has an update about open telemetry profiling. This is going to be sort of hotel day, um, and so I guess we'll have a little bit of extra time to either return to folks or talk about other stuff. If VJ is not coming today, what what was VJ's topic? Was it the uh, query? No, uh, he um. Survey? Late last year, he put out a fairly large blog post about how and why eBay pivoted to open telemetry. Uh, we had talked in KubeCon actually back back in Detroit at dinner, uh, Henrik was there and Ryan and a few others. Um, and he was gonna give a more in-depth overview and, and kind of walk through the technical aspects of that. Um, but I think at plus eight minutes, we should probably move on. Um, here, I'll put again, for the folks that just joined, Feel free to sign in if there's anything you'd like to talk about today or um, put on the agenda for future meetings. We've got some extra time, it seems, today. Um, yeah, he must be on vacation. He's not responding, so. You heard from him, you said, uh, Chris? Yeah, we were starting a, a document to charter a worker for the uh, query um, survey and mm -hmm. state. Okay, uh, well then I guess without further ado, Ryan, do you wanna give us an update of what's been going on in the open telemetry profiling arena? Mm -hmm. um, since I think the last time we've talked about it in the tag was probably just before KubeCon North America. So um, yeah, let me see if I can pull up something, sorry. Um, yeah, so we have been, I guess, yeah, I don't know how familiar everyone is, but basically we've been, you know, working with the, in a working group, um, on getting profiling accepted into OTEL as an official signal. I can show you, let me share my screen. This is the right screen. Uh, do you see a presentation? Yeah, I won't give this whole presentation, but um, but yeah, basically, got time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not worth going through the whole thing, but basically, so um, you know, we are tomorrow actually meeting with the collector sig. <clears throat> this presentation was prepared for that, um, and we're having some discussions today. And so the idea is that, you know, we want profiling to be treated in a similar way to the other signals in OTEL. Um, so logs, metrics, and traces, um, and being able to be correlated with those signals pretty easily, being efficiently, you know, sort of shuffled back and forth, all that kind of stuff. And so um, <clears throat> we've kind of figured out, we initially had a um, profiling vision, OTEP, actually, let me also, I'll paste the link to this in the meeting notes. Yeah, I just pasted the link to this in the meeting notes. Um, so we had the uh, profiling vision, OTEP, where we sort of talked about, you know, what is profiling, um, you know, why we want to add it, what's the current state, making it compatible with other signals, standardizing profiles. There's, um, you know, a million different formats for profiles. And so um, we want to kind of start to condense those more and more um, and ideally come up with sort of like one, one format to rule them all. Um, you know, uh, always, never easy to create a new format, uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully that works out. Um, 
And yeah, and so there's this similarly kind of goes through a the similar sort of like line of of thinking there, explaining all this kind of stuff. And yeah, the, the place where we're at now is, <clears throat> you know, now that we have this idea of what profiling should be, we know we want to support PProf and JFR, which are the two main uh, profiling formats that exist currently. Um, and then we know we want to create a slightly more OTEL specific version of those called, we're probably going to call it OPROF. Um, that is basically a, uh, you know, sort of like an extension of PProf uh, with some with some added functionality for continuous profiling, whereas PProf wasn't necessarily meant for that use case. And then, um, and then, yeah, so now the part we're trying to figure out is like, what do we do with the collector? Like, how do we, you know, support all of these formats and then get them from the collector to their respective backends? What happens if there's not a collector? All that kind of stuff. And so we're planning on meeting with the um, collector SIG basically uh, to figure out, you know, um, yeah, we're trying to, you know, explain this idea and then discuss these various questions so that when we do, you know, sort of like add profiling to the collector, we do it in a way that is consistent and that, uh, you know, keeps the hotel community happy. So that's basically where we are at with the hotel profiling stuff. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, two questions on the collector. First one, uh, is it been considered to have a processor on the collector that will add a tag on the fly on those profiles coming in? Yeah, so there will be... So yeah, so that's one of the things we want to discuss with them tomorrow. I guess, yeah, I'll also put the time. I believe it's at, I only know it in Pacific time. I believe it's at like 10 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow, maybe 9 a.m. Sorry, 9 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow, um, if you want to go to that meeting. But uh, but yeah, so there there will be some amount of processing that happens. We don't know how much. Um, yeah, that's, it's kind of a, a delicate balance of like, how much can you do in the collector with still keeping it lightweight? Um, that would be something that would be easy to add, well, relatively easy to add, but also we want, potentially want to be able to convert some things in the collector uh which i would say is probably like a higher priority of some like if we if we had to choose between one or the other it might be like tag it on the clients and then in the collector you know like you know just have that for the conversion thing or maybe maybe we switch it maybe we convert it. you know what i mean like there's there's a lot of options there um but yeah we will make sure that that ability is available somewhere it's just a matter of where that's available and the second question is um, uh, is still related to another processor. I was thinking when you present that, it would be awesome to have this similar processor than span metrics, where you are basically getting the profile and you extract uh, some metrics, let's say the CPU mm. time for a giving node of the profile or, or, or the total node, whatever. Uh, so then you, out of the, the metrics produced on the collector we will also have those extra uh, kpi produced from from a profile from from the source of the profile yeah now that we have not really discussed uh Sorry, Henry, i'm just taking those could you restate the question uh the, your, your second question um it's basically uh if they're pl planning to do a processor that will produce metrics uh, from uh, the profile going through the collector uh, so basically, uh, extracting the response times, or I don't know, the CPU uh, CPU time, or the memory, or blocks, whatever the type of information you have in, in the profile. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that is. Yeah. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense. Honestly. Yeah. We haven't really uh, gotten that deep into it at this point. We're still kind of figuring out. You know. I guess. Yeah. The biggest thing is. A lot of the people in the profiling group kind of come from less of an hotel background. And so we are trying to understand like what are the what are the um constraints within, you know, of what we can and can't do. 
and uh, basically we'll you know stretch those as far as we can, assuming that it's you know assuming that that's allowed. For example, like yeah, we should totally do that. I mean that makes a lot of sense. Honestly, I'll add it to the. Um, uh, we have kind of like a running dock of, you know, sort of like ideas and things that we want to be able to add. Um, I'll add it to that, to that list. Great. So question uh, regarding, well, maybe comment on, on the first question around the annotation of metadata, isn't there already a Kubernetes um, integration with the collector that uses service discovery and or you know the Kubernetes API sort to get metadata about things, and yeah, yeah. The, it adds it, it adds on on top of metrics and 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 traces. Um, I I don't know if it will be also compatible with. Yeah, my uh, with my, my question is how, how hard coded and, and tied to those specific signal types is it, or is it abstracted as a, just an art, you know a generic annotator of things um, where things happen to be signals? Do we know? I'm not sure. My understanding is that. I don't think that it's like they're using like literally the exact same, you know, like, I don't know, for lack of a better term, like component or whatever, but I think they use the same sort of like architecture to get it, but I could be wrong on that. I'm not sure. But however they do it, that's, you know, kind of the, the idea is that profiling would do it the same way. I don't see any reason why, uh, you know, just uh, from a fundamental standpoint that we wouldn't be able to do it the same way in profiles as we do in, in those other signals. And that's part of the reason, yeah, for this like new format, it might make it, I guess, yeah, the, the only time it would be hard to do is if we try to like cram it into like JFR, for example, like that gets a little, little tricky. Um, but that's kind of the reason for the new format is, you know, making it easy to, yeah, like be compatible with the way Otel does things already. Yeah. Um, that's probably a segue to what we talked about a little bit yesterday. Um, you know, maybe you could go over the sort of the two different uh, sort of the thinking, the, the present thinking in the working group uh, around uh, handling things as is versus the OPROP program. You know, we had the kind of two echelons of of, of processing uh, that I think that's a that's a relevant. Uh, yeah. Thing. So so yeah. So the the interesting thing with profiling is that you know it, like PROF is you know definitely very good. You know, obviously it's been refined. It was created by Google. Like you know, it's like not a uh, you know. Yeah, it's not just like a random format. And so, you know, for us to like do anything to like extend or change PROF, it's like, you know, definitely has to be justified. But at the same time, you know, PROF, like I said, wasn't created for, you know, this like continuous profiling use case, which is now where most, you know, observability vendors are heading, what, you know, the way people are using profiling is sort of shifting more from, you know, uh, like profiling a random process on a machine or profiling, um, you know, a script that you're running locally to a more sort of like whole system, you know, always on profiling model. And, um, and PROF isn't the most optimized for that. And it just doesn't make sense to like, you know, change PROF directly. Um, we have uh, one of the PROF maintainers, Alexei, is part of the working group at, you know, and he's like, yeah, it's just like, you know, like not realistic. At the same time, you know, you have like uh, the Go runtime, which uses PROF. And they also said, you know, for now, PROF does what they want it to do. They don't want to like switch to a new, you know, format necessarily um, yet. But they're like, they would say that they would be, we also had someone from one of the PPROF or one of the Go runtime maintainers come to our meeting. And he's like, you know, eventually it's something that we would definitely consider, but, you know, we kind of need more, data points before then. So in the meantime, you know, we want to still be able to support Go, uh, you know, PROF, and then still be able to support JFR um, while also sort of introducing this new format. So what we're going to, right now, what we're presenting is this architecture where, you know, the backends can sort of decide which, which one of those, or, you know, either all of those, some of those three formats that they want to accept. Uh, the three formats being PPROF, JFR, and then the new OTEL format. Um, and the collector can, will, if it does convert anything, will convert PPROF or JFR into this OPROF format and then send that to the backends. 
or if you like it can effectively just like proxy pprof or jfr to the backends in which case the backends would have to decide like do we accept pprof and do we accept jfr and you know yeah they can kind of decide how they want to do that like maybe they convert it to oprof on their side you know the backends but um it kind of allows a transition period to go from and also the ability to kind of compare the three like what happens if you just send it as pprof what happens if you send it as oprof what happens if you send it as jfr and being able to see you know which one's more efficient which one's uh you know better for whatever reason you know uh, sending less data more compressed whatever it might be um and yeah so that's kind of the current proposed architecture again like you know it might turn out that converting on the collector is like too much you know too heavy for the collector in which case you know we have to figure out some other way to handle that but that's kind of the the set of problems we're trying to understand and solve at the moment that's great um that's kind of consistent with some of the meetings we had over the summertime as well and some of the feedback we had from the various hotel folks um hotel supports uh, the collector supports just moving bits as is using a, a generic buffering mechanism. Um, uh, and so, you know, but by, by doing it this way, we can kind of have an apples to apples comparison on a couple of different fronts, one from existing collection and distribution mechanisms for things like PPROF or JFR in their in their normal form, and then use the collector to shovel bits. That's a nice comparison, you, you know, um, uh, and then and then from there, we could compare that to some of this more inline stuff. The other thing that that I'm recalling from the from the summertime that I'm glad is still part of the conversation is um, in, in talking to various consumers of profiling stuff. I'm one of them. Um, and, you know where the where the cost of conversion happens is going to be different for different scenarios. Some people are going to want to do it at the point of collection at the edge because it makes sense to do so there. Others are going to want to do it very much or very strongly feel that, that it'll be done all on the back end. So. I think by leveraging hotels architecture and letting people mix and match where they do these things, you know, mm -hmm. we, we don't have to have those trade off discussions of is this too expensive for the collector or not expensive enough for the collector, you know, and just have a, a single scenario solution. Um, so the modularity piece, I think, is is worth is worth keeping. Um, and I'm glad to see it's there. Um, is there anything else that folks might want to be either jumping in because there's a need for more minds or more skill or more domain expertise, not skill rather, but domain expertise is a better way to put that. Um, or are you looking for help? Like if people want to jump in, how how could they? Are there unsolved problems wholesale that, that need fresh eyes or are we at more on a Clyde path to working on targeted problems um, at this point? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think we're getting close to that sort of like, you know, request for feedback from the community type of thing, like how for those who are using, you know, the collector, for example, you know, like, do you feel like it's, a, you know, like it's, it's too busy already, you know, like, if, I guess, yeah, there's, we're close to that point, I think it will, we should wait until after we've had a chance to talk to the SIG um, or the tag, I keep getting it backwards. Sig, uh, yeah, yeah, the Sig, and uh, and um, yeah, I mean, and I think after that, then I think we will probably go back, make a couple of changes, and then we're getting pretty close to doing like an official OTEP for you know a, a proposal for this, um, yeah, for for this new format. You know, before we just kind of did a proposal about the proposal. You know, just kind of like, hey, we're going to propose something. This is like the direction we're going. Um, but this one will be more of a sort of like technical uh, OTEP, you know, with these are the fields, um, you know, uh, kind of what Henrik mentioned earlier, like those types of questions, um, those that will probably be when those become more or definitely be where those become more, uh, I guess, important to consider, you know, oh, did you consider how will we be able to do this? If not now, then in the future, those types of things. Cool. Um, I really just had two other two two final questions, but I want to let everybody. Else, I, I don't want to dominate. Uh, I had a, I had a hit list, but did, does anybody else uh, have questions for Ryan or about profiling? Okay. Well, uh, I have maybe one. Uh, if you 
Go for it. Um, so the so here you mentioned about the format and the collector. Um, I guess you will uh, extend the current libraries that are available to generate metrics and traces in various language to be able to somehow create custom, I mean, not custom profile, but uh, create tags on a given functions or something like this, and then have this notion of exemplars where you have a, a similar to what the, the Periscope integration with OpenTelemetry where uh, the, the profile are, are um, um, enriching the the produced um, spans mm -hmm. is it something that is also part of the discussion with of the group or this is going to be like way later in the in the process yeah no that will definitely be one of the earlier things i think that was <clears throat> one of the most uh sort of like requested features um so yeah pyroscope has one uh datadog has the ability to do that um and basically uh right now you can kind of you know hack it into uh if you do have pprof for example uh, pprof has labels you can sort of put like the span id or or whatever it is in those labels but again that's like just not the most efficient way to do it especially if you're needing to kind of like access that that key easily and so, or that label easily. And so uh, one of the, you know, proposed things, it's like a fairly simple change, but it's just making that a field on the, the new format. So that it's just like specifically, you know, if you're linking it to anything, whether it be, you know, log trace um, or sorry, log or span or trace, I guess, um, having a field that's specifically dedicated to that um, as opposed to having to like read a bunch of labels, find that label within there, you know, that kind of thing. And so, especially if you have a lot of them, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, yeah. And so that's definitely one of the things that is easy enough to do early on. And I, I would say we kind of consider that one of the like lower hanging fruits out of the things that we can do to make an improvement over um, like PPROF or JFR. And, and and the other second question is that when you at the moment when you use Pyroscope, it adds the uh, the baseline URL of these giving spans and uh, the comparison view and the diffs view and so on. So here, uh, if you use the open telemetry logic, you don't know where this profile will head. head. I mean, probably one back end today and tomorrow another one. Mm -hmm. So is in the collector discussion, is this uh, so, um, like a, is there a process that will look at the profile and based on the exporter adjust the span attributes by adding the right link to those different dashboards or this is again something maybe too early yeah so that's something I guess not we haven't really talked about necessarily the dashboard side like where you then you know once you send it somewhere where you view it but I guess theoretically that should probably be where you view the profile is probably the same place you send the profile. And so that is one thing that we did talk about. Another piece of this was that, um, you know, right now, so many different, uh, you know, backends use different formats, you know, Pyroscope uses a different one from Datadog, which is a different one from Elastic, which, you know, so on and so forth. And so the uh, part of the idea is that, you know, you can, uh, just direct it to whichever backend you want, similar to, you know, like the, that's one of the main, you know, sort of like tenants or missions or whatever you want to call it of Otel is being able to kind of substitute in or out. I think it's like, you know, yeah, for tracing, you can have just like your tracing provider. And then, you know, once you have that, you can send it to any of them that, you know, accept Otel format traces. And uh, we want to do the same thing for profiling. And I suspect it's sort of just like a, follow-up step to that is once you've set that, you know, provider, then you can, uh, you know, be able to view it there as well. Yeah, because I was thinking to keep it agnostic, for example, so my code is pushing profiles to a collector, uh -huh. and then the collector, I have a backend today defined, and maybe tomorrow, if I switch tool, I will, I will select another tool. Uh -huh. So I, I will probably expect that uh, if I use a given exporter, that the exporter is adding the right uh, spans attributes uh, to link the profile produced to uh, to the span attributes. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Um, 
Yeah, I will definitely uh, bring to this group and I'm sure you'll see somewhere once we get to the like particular yeah implementation phase, making sure we have that. But I think we should. Yeah, I would be surprised if we, we've definitely talked about it. So I definitely think that that will be in there, if not like V1, a very like, you know, close follow up V2 type of thing. Um, but I would I would probably expect that to be in our first version to have that because uh, I think that will be like, you know, one of the features that people will be really excited about. Yep. Cool. Um, <clears throat> one other another question I had stemming from the discussions through the fall uh, and during KubeCon uh, is around, you know, was a decision made within the profiling group around uh, whether or not the standard format, the, the sort of superset or universal format that things could be converted to, if that's lossy versus lossless? Um, uh, we were aiming for lossless for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, that was that was definitely one of the things that it should be able to be converted to PPROF, for example, and back without like losing, yeah, without losing information. Um, you know, obviously easier said than done. We have to, you know, go through the implementation and, and make sure that that's still the case. But yeah, that's the plan for now. Okay. Um, and then the last question I had, I promise, uh, is do you have any um, uh, projected timeline around when CNCF end users uh, that might want to, you know, they might already have open telemetry deployed at some degree of scale or not, um, could actually, you know, get their hands dirty and I don't want to say play with it, but but provide feedback uh, around uh, how this looks in the wild at varying levels of scale. Uh, you know, yeah. a lot of people are doing planning for Q1, Q2, and and for the year. I could be projecting, but I'm doing planning. Um, I mean, uh, you know, when would be useful to have people actually um, potentially hire, kick this, and or give some early feedback if they're so inclined. Yeah, I think it kind of depends a little bit on, uh, honestly, you know, how the meeting goes tomorrow. Uh, you know, if the collector SIG is like, well, this is like so far from, you know, something that we would do. Um, I don't think that would be the case. But our goal is to have, you know, sort of like hit that next milestone, which is what you just mentioned, like, you know, having it at a phase where, um, you know, at least there's, yeah, you know, something that people can, you know, give feedback on and that kind of stuff. And the goal is to have that by KubeCon, um, which I believe is the end of April. Um, and yeah. the beginning mid, of April. Mid, mid of April, yeah. Mid April, yeah. So, yeah, so our goal is to, you know, at least have something or be very close to something so that, you know, KubeCon is always like a nice place to sort of like regroup with everyone and and explain the progress and all that kind of stuff. And so that's sort of what we're aiming for uh, timeline wise. But we'll, uh, you know, that's it's coming up quick, you know, with these things It always it always, uh, you know, sneaks up on you. So we'll see. But that's kind of the plan right now is to you know, get this to a place, you know, where, where people can try it out by KubeCon. Okay, so to be clear, for KubeCon, the group is targeting having a technical OTEP draft yeah. and ready for feedback or some degree of implementation or prototyping done. I guess, yeah, the OTEP, definitely the OTEP side of things, I would say, yeah, the actually having it, you know, sort of like ready for people to use is a little bit more ambitious for that timeline, but in the OTEP, I, I mean, I think if we're at the stage where we have the OTEP, then it will be sort of uh, as part of that, we'll want people to try it out and make sure that, you know, the the proposed, you know, what we've proposed, like, doesn't, yeah, that, that it makes sense. And so I think we will have something, you know, it might be in a, uh, yeah, you know, sort of in a beta stage at that point, but that people can try and see how it works for them. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we filled a little bit of extra time with bringing you with questions. Sure. Um, oh, um, yeah. I, you know, we, feel free to. Uh, there's a hashtag, hotel profiles. What is it? Hotel profiling channel. I'll put a link to it if you want to join and follow the progress there. Um, copy link. I will add it to the meeting notes. Hotel group and Slack. Uh, yeah, feel free to join it and just 
you know, you'll be able to follow the the updates there. Oops, is that right? Oh yeah, no, that's right. Cool. Great. And that meeting again is tomorrow for anyone interested. The uh, collector SIG meeting. And then the hotel group meets every other Thursday. So not this Thursday, but the next one. All right. Any other questions for Ryan? Okay. Um, so we're going to, as I said, uh, uh, skip VJ uh, uh, unexpectedly. Uh, Chris, you had a draft to talk about. Yeah, if that's okay to just take a quick five minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, cool. like I said, we, 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 have, we, we had a good half, 30 to 40 minutes open up. So open floor. Sure. Oh, welcome. Awesome. Um, yeah, so anyways, I'm Chris Larson. I uh, manage the old, ancient, now open TS3 project, and then I'm working on Netflix. Um, we have a custom language at Netflix for um, metrics, logs, and trace uh, querying. People coming onboarding to Netflix don't like it much. It's pretty complicated. It's an old uh, reverse Polish notation query format. So um, I started uh, a project internally to look at different languages for observability tools, see what the commonalities are, what the differences are, what people like about it. And then I um, met with uh, Ken, and he mentioned that um, some folks in the observability tag were looking at the same thing, uh, so I reached out to VJ there, and uh, we started a draft um, for a charter for a working group um, to uh, first start off by looking at common use cases for observability queries. Um, that would be across metrics, traces, even profiling too, since uh, Ryan uh, brought that up. Um, which is awesome it's a great part of um, observability now and then also i want to look at esoteric use cases for query languages um, because you know anytime you give a tool to users they'll come up with some really creative <laughs> and complex and messy ways to use it so i want to capture a bunch of those as well and then i want to look at all the uh, most popular query languages like from well of course uh, splunk um, the various branches and tendrils of SQL that are out there now for observability and try to define A, their semantics, which is the most important aspect of any query language. Um, and I want to try to capture that in a database for the different operators, what kind of data they can operate on, how they expect that data to be formatted, um, and then what the outputs are. And then after compiling that, I was hoping to go through um, as a group and look and see if there are any commonalities between the languages that pop out and say, hey, this is easy. We can just say this is a, the best way to interop with this um, kind of operation. And then eventually, um, I know BJ was more interested in having a standard um, that the group recommended and perhaps a syntax on top of that. Syntax, of course, I think is going to be the messiest thing um to deal with lots of bike shedding there semantics of course would be difficult to work on but hopefully there'll be some more standards that could pop out of that um anyway so for the group i wanted folks to take a look at that uh document add comments thoughts questions um and then i wanted to find out from the group what the next steps are to get a proper working group started um and working and doing some work um, so any thoughts or questions in there so when is that uh, working group or um uh or um meeting because in fact we had uh, the similar discussion few if i remember a few weeks before a couple of weeks before uh, and uh Perfect. the initially the answer was uh, open telemetry is not the right umbrella to take that Unified query language, uh, because we wanted uh, we wanted to build that this unified query language where instead of uh, having yeah uh, every vendor is building their own query language, it would be great to have one single uh, unified query language uh, for all those signals uh, and so people can make, build the dashboards and easily transition dashboards from one product to the other. Um, so I'm I'm just excited to see that there's a there is actually a working group on that. So when are you currently meeting? 
Um, we haven't set up any meetings yet. I was just chatting with VJ to get this charter set up. Um, and then before scheduling meetings or officially launching it, I wanted to ask the group, um, probably the chairs, um, what else I needed to do before, you know, to make sure it's blessed and not some uh, little shard floating off to the side. Um, but I'm, I would like to launch it within by the end of January here. And then uh, we put some tentative timelines in the charter too. Sure. Um, I, I can probably speak to the logistical side um, uh, around the creation of working groups. So I put a link into the doc into uh, this is the CNCF section around responsibilities and empowerments of AGs. And I'm, I put a link there and I'm just dropping in, you know, this is, this is like pretty much the sum total of the, you know, um, red tape or administrivia around the formation of tags, uh, or rather working groups. Now, uh, up until late last year, working groups didn't necessarily have a, a specific uh, tag sponsor. So working groups kind of were amorphous and could span N tags. And, and there wasn't really a clear, um, uh, uh, you know, a clear ontology or a clear ownership. Uh, that's now changed. I can dredge up the TLC issues where all the discussion happened late last year. Um, but um, the, the TLC has pivoted to move to working groups have to have, you know, as I understand it, a tag umbrella under them. Um, and, and for folks that either weren't in Detroit or didn't, didn't weren't privy to sort of the, those conversations that happened um, that were just refer referred to around the query language and open telemetry not necessarily being the best place. Uh, this is at Hotel Unplugged, I believe. There was uh, it was an offsite at, at Detroit that that we had where this was talked about in some detail. Uh, and then later, uh, outside of the Hotel Unplugged event uh, in the conference proper, every every KubeCon there's a, a one to two hour Hotel community meeting uh, where you know open telemetry decides as a group on what the overall shape of things is in, in terms of work streams. Um, I could summarize that briefly here for the video and those the, the, those on uh, watching it later or all of you. Um, within open telemetry, we have lots of different vendors uh, that compete with each other, uh, you know, on oftentimes the back ends and the query languages, they're, they are specific to those providers. And open telemetry as a project is squarely focused on the collection of observability data and is quite specifically not about what to do with it once it's collected the analysis, the storage, the query languages. Um, and that's very intentional because we're, what was that that whole part of, of the pie in scope for OTEL that would be a bit of an existential dilemma for those participating in it, right? Uh, so so they, they leave a pretty clear line. And I believe um, a gentleman from Signaz was one of the people that kind of brought this up uh, a couple of times and, and that's what motivated the question. So, so open telemetry is pretty firm on on a working group like this should not exist. Uh, now in the technical advisory group, you know, where we have vendors and users and, you know, and, and project maintainers all come together, we have a lot of latitude. And so if there's interest around this and there seems to be, uh, uh, the overall, you know, process is pretty lightweight. Uh, so on our tag observability board, that there's a, a web, uh, on the tag observability repo, there is a project for working groups that's grown a bit stale. Um, I can own that, but we've also had, you know, tail end of the year and holidays, but we basically make an issue in there. Um, and we have an example uh, working group that was launched by Ken. Uh, so we have sort of a model, uh, but what you've done here in the doc from what I can see with a cursory read is, is up the center line. So I would suggest that um, we can put out, uh, send an email to the tag observability list uh, with a link to this uh, Google doc, give people in the community a few weeks um, if your timeline for the end of January uh, works, that, that's fine. I think two weeks is sufficient to comment on that charter document for the working group. Um, at a high level, without reading all of the things, working groups really just have to do a couple of things. They have to be time bounded, right? So they can go on for a long time, but they do have to have a, a line in the sand that says, you know, this is the rough scope of what we're trying to do. And this is the timeline. Uh, and this is what the outcomes uh, we hope to have our, and that can be revisited, but uh, it just can't be, you know, we're going to launch a work group and it's going to talk about stuff forever, right? It, it has to be somewhat what targeted and specific. Um, and it reports back to the tag. It sets its own meetings. It sets its own, you know, you can, you can elect things. You can have as much or as little process as you like. 
It just has to be in the open uh, and, uh, in, in, you know, in, in an open open source way. So I think what you've done is great. Uh, again, I would suggest send an email to the mailing list, take a couple of weeks of feedback, and perhaps at our next tag meeting in two weeks from today, um, which would be the um, uh, two weeks and change would be the first Tuesday, the, the first Tuesday of February. Um, we meet on the first and third Tuesdays, uh, and which is in the cadence of the TOC meetings. Uh, we can we can revisit and and if all looks good, make the working group. Um, it, it would need uh, ideally two um, co chairs. Uh, the CNCF generally prefers not to have singular um, singular chairs, just both so that you know if someone's sick or on vacation, things don't stall, but also so that um, you know. So so if you want to find a, a partner. Um, or, or, or a colleague, you know, that, that is also wants to drive this. Um, I think that would be the other thing to get in place. And then we can um, uh, write the formal proposal as a TOC issue. Um, once, once that first step is done, that says, hey, Tag Observability wants to sponsor this new working group. These are the principles that are driving it. Um, this is what it hopes to, you know, da, 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 da. And then, you know, we, 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 we it's created. And then, and then it's up to you to drive it and build community around it and 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 do the work um, or, or facilitate the work. So, cool. Yeah, well, we've got uh, VJ and myself so far. So we've got two people who could chair, and then anybody yeah. else who wants to chair also. So that'd be great. Yeah, and I, and I would expect um, maybe depending on how long you're going to run it, like maybe monthly updates to the tag, or if you want to come and, and give a, a quick update, depending on how quickly you're going and how much feedback and exposure you want to get. Um, and, and we can, you know, we'll have in the notes, uh, this year, um, Alalita and I are going to endeavor to do a much better job of, um, you know, publishing things out to LinkedIn and Twitter and, and all the places. Um, but yeah, um, cool. thank you for taking the initiative to, to start up, um, this thing and, um, I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, I will also, I would also add, so yeah, like they, uh, for specifically for like working groups. So for the, pro, for the profiling working group. Um, let me add it to the bottom of, let's see, how do I add it in here? Um, I'll put it in the, in the zoom chat too. I believe this was the PR they, so like, I think we were the first group that officially followed this, uh, you know, sort of, uh, structure here, but yeah, they, they basically gave us this for the profiling group as well of like the things that you need in order, like the check boxes you need to check also. And, and if you want to create a working group like getting a tc member to sponsor it and all that kind of stuff so um it's a lot of stuff that uh matt just said but um i think this is an updated sort of like consolidated one that they did for you know because uh, there's been a lot of requests for new working groups and so it, it kind of gives a little bit of context of like what you need to have in order to get an official one with hotel yeah, and to, to, to be clear, um, that document I think is uh, analogous in terms of the intent, and and as Brian put, I think open telemetry is a little more structured um, in, in some ways uh, because it is. Uh, but we're talking about a CNCF working group, uh, a TAG working group, uh, not necessarily an hotel working group. But yeah, and I think it's a great example document. Um, I'm also going to put into the meeting notes uh, what I referenced. It's um, well, you'll see it's it's pretty late. Like, it's just. It's just a, a GitHub project. So if you want to create an issue there um, on that board, um, uh, feel free. Uh, I'll put it right under that other one. Oops. Google Docs are hard. There. Um, uh, and, and when I when I say lightweight process, I really did mean it. Uh, it's just this is a board. Um, we actually have a project. We actually have a issue. There's a bunch of issues we have defined that um, are just looking for, for folks that want to work on things. But um, this will now be, I think, the second or third working group that the the tag is this tag is looked to launch. Uh, we probably have critical mass now to to do the issue around formalizing how to do a work group with some templates to jumpstart what you're about to do. So uh, perhaps we just move forward, and when we're done, we can templateify. Um, Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Also, is there any kind of a CNF support to send out possibly surveys to members? Um, there is. There are a couple avenues for that. 
Um, there is the uh, the CNCF has a one of its sub communities is the CNCF end user community, and that is a community that puts out a, ver a number of surveys around what people are using. You've probably seen the end user community radars. Um, there are also um, the CNCF has a marketing arm um, that uh, that that works on things like the blog and other sorts of uh, webinars and surveys. So uh, I can I can chat offline if you like around some of the specifics and connect you with some of those i'm not sure for what working groups you know if, if there's a formalized way to do you know send out a survey um uh, but I, I i'm certain that either through the end user community there's some mechanism to do that uh you could also do a survey and put it out to things like the you know the, the tag slack channel and or the mailing list uh, we have almost about 800 people or something like that in the Tag Observability channel. So if you wanted to make a survey as a Tag member, welcome, you're a member, um, yeah. you, you do so as well. Uh, I'll follow up with um, folks on the CNCF side and, and put you on an email to see if there's anything more formalized. Um, I will say that the CNCF try, well, it doesn't try, it, it, it adheres pretty well to the no Kingmaker uh, policy. So, so while I'm sure that them supporting an effort like a survey is fine if it's i guess it, it depends and and they they do a great job of maintaining some neutrality um so i'm not sure at what level uh, of the cncf we would expect support from but certainly from the end user community yeah yeah i'll we'll get some thought to it but yeah cool. yeah hit me up on slack uh, a little later uh, and and we can i can i can sync you up some of the specifics we'll probably talk to amy um would be a good place to start cool. Sounds good. Yeah, and that's all I have. Great. Uh, so we'll see you in two weeks with an update on how, how it's gone. Um, I've been threatening for a while now to cover that landscape graph project, which has been largely mothballed for a month or two while I've been taking on a new role in my day job. Um, I'm, I'm just about prepared to return to that. Um, uh, and I'll give an overview of that project uh, in two weeks. Um, uh, but long, long and short, there's a, there's a project to find, there's prototypes and MVPs there and a whole pile of interesting stuff that folks want to engage. Um, uh, but I'll, I'll be covering that next week uh, with a small deck. So. Other than that, I don't know that we have anything on the agenda for uh, two weeks from now, but I think we're technically at time. Well, we're four minutes over, actually, so I want to respect everyone's calendar. Um, but if there's nothing else, um, Thanks for joining. Uh, I'll post this video a little bit later today. Thanks thank so you all. Thanks. Yeah.